Welcome to Outdoors with the Common Man. Let's go shoot some shit. Beautiful little guys They're called fiddleheads. going on YouTube? Coyote here for Outdoors with the Common Man. Today I'm going to bring you a little video about mushroom foraging. It is about the middle of August here in northern New York. So we're going to go ahead and we've already went out today, me, my children, and my wife. We went out and did some mushroom hunting. Didn't find a bunch of different varieties, but I found two varieties and I found them plentiful. I found about, I'd have to say close to five pounds of oyster mushroom and then I also found about two to three pounds probably of chicken of the woods so without further ado we'll go ahead and we'll get this done there'll be some other mushroom pictures in there I found some mushrooms I wasn't sure of and remember if you're not sure of what they are you can always bring them home research them and two three four different types that you're positive you have what you have because if you don't know what you got okay. throw it out because you can eat something that looks there's a lot of look likes for a lot of things out there and they can kill you and like i said before i don't want to kill any of my viewers with the knowledge that i'm trying to pass on so i found some i didn't know what they were there'll be pictures of them I know one type that I had I brought home, I swore it was lion's mane, which is a toothed or a spined mushroom. I looked and I couldn't positively identify it, so I threw it out. Simple as that. If I find out that I had the right stuff, I'll grab it next time I'm out. If I find out that it was the wrong stuff, I didn't put my family in jeopardy and I didn't put you guys at jeopardy. So we'll go ahead, we'll get into some mushrooms. You know, I found all my mushrooms on dead wood. These guys are shelf mushrooms, both types. They grow on dead trees in the middle of the, you know, usually a dense part of the forest. Usually got to have a decent amount of moisture around. And I found the oyster mushrooms actually growing on the side of a tree. We found a small patch and then we found a larger patch on the back side of the tree and there, there's the only one of the kinds of mushrooms that you can actually like grow at home easily. You can buy kits for them. Oyster mushrooms are super good to grow at home, super easy. But if you can get a wild mushroom from out in the woods, you had a nice day in the woods, a nice hike, and you got food for dinner that night. We're going to slap all of ours in a dehydrator so that we can rehydrate them this winter and we can have fresh wild mushrooms all year round. So we're going to go ahead. And I'll get into showing you some of these. I haven't cleaned them up yet. I just got home from the woods with them. So we're going to go ahead and show you these. All right, guys. So here's one of the shelves, or two of the shelves that I got from my, as I said, haven't cleaned it up, but from my chicken of the woods that we found. Okay? Chicken of the woods is a polypore mushroom, which means that on the bottom side, is all these bunch of different little pores in it. It almost to me reminds me of a sponge or something like that. Okay. And then on the top side, as you can see, it's got this nice orange color and it travels down through different colors like orange and yellows all the way down through it. These are good mushrooms, good to eat, good to dehydrate, good to rehydrate. Great for immune system boosters, great for just eating. One of the most delectable ones, choice edible mushrooms right here. Here's another one, as you can see, once again, nice, porous, polypore. See where the reason? Because there's multiple pores in there, so they call them the polypore mush. This is one of them that obviously we didn't clean up yet, we didn't clean any of them like I said. But all this stuff, just take a damp paper towel and just brush it off with it. It'll be perfectly fine. 
That's gonna be your oyster, or I mean your hen of the chicken of the woods. Yes, I know, I don't speak well. I don't have fine etiquette. I'm here to help you guys save your grocery bills. You can't buy these in stores. You try to buy them online, they're like $10, $15 a pound. I found $45 worth of this stuff in the woods. Groceries from the woods. It's the way we go out here and out cold, outdoors with the common man. All right, now we're gonna move over to the oyster mushroom. This is, like I said, a choice edible mushroom. You can, you can buy these in a store. They're pretty expensive. You can get kits so that you can grow them at your house. It's pretty simple, fun little project for you and the kids. You know, it's always nice to get your kids in on something when you can actually eat it, as well as go and get it out of the woods. It's a science project, okay? Because remember, mushrooms, these guys are actually the fruiting bodies of the mushroom. An actual mushroom is the mycelium that looks kind of like a spider's web on the stuff inside the rotten wood or under the ground. That's what actually makes the mushroom. All these guys do is the reproductive fruiting organism of that organism. That's it. Okay, so you got a small oyster mush here. You can see the color. It's pretty predominantly almost a creamy and a white. Runs out, starts to get a little tan and a little grayish around the edges. But if you turn it over, a good defining characteristic is that this guy has what we refer to as ridges. Okay? Ridges mean they're not perfectly formed. They're all going to be different shapes, different sizes. Where if you get ones that are perfectly formed, all uniform together, those are called gills. A lot of gilled mushrooms are not good to eat from the wild. A gilled mushroom that most people would recognize easily would be a portobello mushroom. All right. Your portobellas are a gilled mushroom. Your baby bellas are gilled. Uh, your creminis are gilled. Now, a, or a, yeah, gilled. A good ridged mushroom that most people will eat and is very common that you can find at the stores and everything else like that is going to be your shiitake mushroom. And the difference is that most gilled mushrooms are only the cap is gilled and they don't and the stalk is not. A ridged mushroom it means that not only do they have these ununiformed ridges in them like this, but the ridge actually runs down onto the stalk. So if you're walking through the woods and you see a capped mushroom on the ground, and you pick it up and look on the underside of it. The gills will stop when the stalk stop starts, but ridges tend to run down onto the stalk. Now, there are a lot of lookalikes for a lot of different mushrooms out there. So, like I said before, do your due diligence. Check and check and check and check until you know that you can positively identify those mushrooms. I can identify hundreds of poisonous mushrooms by just going, no. That's not what I want. It, common rule of thumb for a lot of mushroom hunters, if it's brown, leave it on the ground. There are so many poisonous mushrooms out there that all look alike that it's very dangerous just to be like, oh, well, this mushroom I can eat and just take it home, cook it, and eat it. It doesn't work that way. Now, this is generally about the size, a little bit bigger sometimes. They're smaller. They can get maybe like that big, but my wife and I today, we've been searching this area for years and we finally found the right spot for the right tree to find, to finally be able to harvest oyster mushrooms from it. And once you find a spot, shh, keep it secret because there are a lot of people out there now that are trying to get into this whole, I'm going to go find my food in the woods stuff. Well, here's the problem for us people that have been doing it forever. Now we're going to these places that our families have been going for years. And I've been taking my family for years. And now where I'm supposed to be able to just go, go in and get what I need and get the hell out of there. Now it's gone. Because somebody else has decided, well, this is now my mushroom spot. Or this is now where I'm going to get my fiddleheads. Or my leeks. Or my rose hips. Or my juniper berries. Or my blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, wild strawberries. You know, if you find a good spot and they're a perennial plant or a perennial uh, mushroom, 
you can go there for years to come. But if somebody else finds out about it and you go there, psh, it's done. We were out there today as we are picking mushrooms. I'm walking around and I was filling my shirt, pulling it up and using it as a basket and filling it full of blackberries. Fresh, pure, ripe blackberries. We were walking around on trails eating blackberries. You can go to the store. You try to go to a fruit stand and buy fresh picked wild blackberries. Please, that's going to cost you $10 for one of those little green court thingies. You know, it's crazy. But back to the mushrooms. So I've we actually got a good haul today. We found a very good tree that provided us with a good amount of oyster mushroom and a good amount of the chicken, of the woods mushroom. So, you know, usually, like I said, they're not going to be very big. But we were able to find one. Oh, well, that's my head. That had a bunch of them that are big like this. Now, you can see the ridges on this guy a lot easier. See all the different? They're not uniform. Nothing. Now, we're going to go ahead and clean these all up and so we can take them inside and eat them. But, so tonight in my house, it's going to be a mushroom medley. I might see if I got some more steaks in there. Um, if not, well, no matter what, we're having mushrooms in my house tonight. And I didn't pay a dime for them, and neither should you guys. Get out in the woods. Get out in that outdoors. Enjoy it. It is gorgeous today. It wasn't crazy hot. It wasn't crazy cold. It was got to be around right around 75 degrees out today. It was perfect for walking in the woods. Perfect. And what happens on perfect days? You find perfect things. These guys are going to feed my family, and I can tell you I could probably get about 15 meals. And these are veg these guys have awesome vitamins in them. They're great for immune system boosters. They'll help ward their, you know, they'll help ward off certain diseases. I can't tell you. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. All I know is the oyster mushroom is a choice mushroom and is amazing. And the chicken of the woods mushroom is a very meaty mushroom. It tastes great. And uh, you know, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, I understand. Whatever. Not for me. Maybe for you. But. These guys, would mushrooms make a great meat replacement in dishes. So you say you want to make a meatless lasagna or you want to do some kind of casserole or something like that. Saute up some mushrooms. Boil them, braise them, cook them. You know, you go off bubble from Forrest Gump on them, you know. Mushroom this, mushroom that, mushroom that. Do what you got to do. But I'm telling you, get out in the woods. Save some money, spend some quality time with the family, and enjoy yourselves. There ain't nothing better in the world to me than watching my kids run down a wood a forest trail. I have pictures from the year, from as soon as they could start walking of them both in the woods with their arms around each other. And every year I get a picture from the back of just like that hanging on my wall. And it, hopefully I can get a picture like that till they have kids. And then hopefully I can get a picture of them like that still when they're older and they each have kids and their kids are doing it. Just one of my favorite poses of my kids and my family is watching my kids walk down the trail all arm in arm. It's better than having them in a hot car arguing and fighting. It's better than having them sitting in the house staring at a phone or a TV screen or something like that. My kids are mushroom champs. My daughter is the one that found these oyster mushrooms. She is six years old and can positively identify oyster mushrooms and chanterelles. My son, who's eight and has autism, posit positively can also identify those same mushrooms and four more. He can positively identify the black trumpet, the puffball, the chanterelle, the oyster mushroom, chicken of the woods, and, a, and uh, uh, one bullet because he thinks it looks like something a gnome would live in. But so far, that's what I've got for you guys for mushrooms. There will be more coming this fall when fall time gets closer, hunting gets closer. Because when I'm walking in the woods or if I'm sitting in my stand, I'm also looking for more food for my family. Not only just for the, the game that I'm going to harvest, but I'm also looking for vegetables. I'm also looking for greens. I'm looking for mushrooms. I'm looking for anything that can cut my bill down, 
save me money, save you money, and... It's time for an OCM flashback. It's springtime in northern New York, so we have fiddleheads, which are ferns. Yes, ferns. Some ferns are edible. The ostrich fern in northern New York is one of the edible ferns where you get your so-called fiddleheads. Now, fiddleheads, to me, have a, a taste sort of like asparagus mixed with green beans. It's a texture and taste, kind of. So, we have some right here in front of us, and I'll show you. These, right here, these beautiful little guys, they're called fiddleheads. They're called that for a reason. As you can see, they're shaped like a fiddle. Right here's your telltale sign. That little U bend inside the stalk lets you know it's an ostrich fern. They look like the head on a fiddle. And thank you guys for being here. Outdoors with the Common Man. I'm Coyote. Real videos for real people. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button. Leave us a comment down below, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Come on, guys. Well, I told you I'd be able to get in the woods. Hopefully, this gets in the mushroom video as well. Found some more chicken of the woods. That's what it looks like on the tree. I mean, you can't miss that shit from a mile away. Nice bright orange colors, man. Chicken of the woods are sulfur shell. And whatever Latin name they decided to get to it. It came out to do some last minute stuff and do my trail cams out here in the food plot and I was right next to the food plot guys. I mean, can't get much better than that. Feeding getting my deers their food and getting me mine. So there you go, that's some wild mushrooms right there that are edible. I'm going to take the majority of this home so I can dehydrate it for the winter and I'll leave a good portion of it so that it can repopulate for next year. So, alright. There you go.